the immediate past minister of aviation and a man whose name became almost synonymous with the Nigeria Air Project, Hadi Sirika, joins us now. Good to see you, Captain Hadi Sirika. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, uh, Ruben. My well, name is Hadi, Hadi Sirika. Well, Captain Hadi Sirika, you must have listened to uh, the videos that we played to introduce this conversation. And there are many Nigerians, not just uh, right. Honorable Nolim uh, Naji, the chair of the Aviation Committee in the House of Reps, but also many other Nigerians who are calling for your arrest and who are saying that you must be investigated. And what they are saying is that why do you need for Nigeria Air? We had Air Nigeria before it failed. And the assumption, the allegation is that what you have been able to uh, impose on Nigerians is a personal project rather than a project designed in national interest. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ruben and the viewers. Uh, I don't think that I'm here to discuss the desirability of having a national carrier for the size of the Nigerian economy, its population, and being at the center of Africa. No, 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 no. I am here because I once been a public servant who has taken decision on behalf of the people and is only morally right that there are accusations of fraud, of corruption, of secrecy, and so on, are not being done in the right manner, and so on. For me to come and explain to the public what has happened, to allay their fears, to explain issues, because I'm ca accountable for my actions. So discussing desirability or not, I think we've gone past that stage. That can be another day. I think respectfully, perhaps, is to ask me all of those questions, like the 85 billion that have been wasted, like the aircraft that came and flew out, and so on. I think that these are the questions that Nigeria wants to know. The farm bro issue, the post holders, who are the owners, where there is secrecy uh, in the whole thing, is shrouded by secrecy, whether it is a fraud according to Inolim. I think, uh, Dr. Abati, i like to use the opportunity, because I know I have limited time, but let me answer the German questions that uh, I, I, I am, am bound, I mean, I'm, I'm to be faced by public. I think, I think that's what it should be. Well, I started with that question that's because possibly. many Nigerians, you know, they are asking, uh, is this a flag carrier or is it a chartered flight, you know, uh, being uh, uh, carried by, uh, you know, Ethiopian Airlines? But the basic question is, how is the unveiling so, so, of so, May 29? So, okay, so, so Nigeria... Okay, so, so, please so, go ahead. So, so Nigeria Air, okay. So Nigeria Air is a company known to Nigeria law called Nigeria Air Limited, with shareholders on the company. So it's not going to be a charter company. It's going to be a company like every other company, and the structure of that company is such that there is five percent for the federal government held in trust by Ministry of Finance Incorporated. Then there is forty-nine percent. Strategic Equity Partner, which is Ethiopian in this case, is also 31% by MRS and 15% by Sakol. This is the structure of uh, the airline. And so is a company known to law, like Max Air is known to law, like Airpiece is known to law, or Ibom. Okay, it's good that uh, you've talked about the uh, uh, shareholders in Nigeria Air, and you've defined the percentages. But one of the companies you mentioned, Sakol, complained that they were not even invited to the unveiling. I, I would like to know, how was the unveiling on May 29 different from the unveiling in Fambro? What is the difference? Right. So, so, there, are, so there are two different uh, phases. Remember at the beginning of this exercise, the federal government of Nigeria had a business plan. And that business plan is such that there is going to be viability gap funding of $350 million by the government of Nigeria through the CBN, which in that case, it will be owned by the company but repaid back to uh, Nigeria. At that time, we did not have the name, the color, the logo of this airline. So we begin a campaign, social media campaign, which is on record, where 400,000 people participated in the campaign to create the name, the logo, uh, the, the color, and the livery of the airline. 
And Fambro, being an air show where the entire world came to, where we will be needing aircraft either from Boeing or from Airbus, and they're all there. So we'd go there and discuss with them and pick the best deal for the airline at that time, when the government was driving it. When the government was driving it. So we thought that in that place, after negotiating with also would-be investors, like a, a roadshow, if you like, so if we, we will have the opportunity to discuss with them, one-stop shop, discuss with OEM, that is manufacturers of aircraft, either Boeing or Airbus or anybody, and also investors uh, or would-be partners like Qatar, like Ethiopian, like Lufthansa, which we all met with them at that time. So to use the opportunity, seize the opportunity at that time, the product of the campaign by 400,000 people will now unveil it for the world to see, hey, we are coming. This is what is going to come. At that time, government is driving it. But thereafter, the business changed. The business OBC outline business case changed. And now they have a partners that have owners. So the unveiling in Abuja, this was done by government. But, and then the purpose of going to Farnborough is not just to unveil, but take advantage of it. But it's to discuss with OEMs, discuss with would be partners, and do a roadshow. But coming back home now, when Nigeria Air had its own shareholders, the bid was done, the bid was won by some people, in their marketing strategy, decided to unveil this aircraft, the, this airline, to come into Nigeria and showcase what it would be, pending when the AOC has been completed and they begin to fly. So the strategy that they did, marketing, is their own, it's for the owners, it's for Ethiopia Airline, uh, MRS, uh, ET, and the Mofi, whoever they are. And uh, the question as to Sarko, that they have not been invited for the unveiling, I wouldn't be the one to answer. Their own partners should answer. And I think it was very clear on the day I was invited and I went there. And I went around the aircraft, I, I saw it, I inspected it, I made statements there. And they asked me that, uh, so when do you think that this aircraft will fly? And I said to them, look, look there, it will fly as soon as the OEC is issued. And that, okay, what if the government that is new now decide not to continue? I said, well, if they decide not to continue, they're only 5% of the company, because they have only 5%. Okay. So 95% will continue. Because it's an airline, known to Nigeria law. So if Sarko will decide not to do, it's the only 15%. The remaining 85 will continue. If, if MRS decides not to continue, the others will continue. So I think it's very clear. Okay, you know, but, anybody, but, but because Captain, it's a partnership but, owned by them. But Captain Sirica, those uh, shareholders that you have mentioned, how much have they paid as please equity? Address, please address me as Senator Hadi or Hadi. Oh, okay. You prefer Senator Adi Sirica. Okay. How much have, have those shareholders yeah. paid as equity into Nigeria? Or oh, they didn't pay anything. Uh, they're just shareholders on paper. So, no, no, no. So, so the business plan had $200 million as a capital. They will pay equal to the shareholder they're doing. I know currently that they are signing the um, shareholders agreement once they finish the documentation of the shareholders agreement and they sign then they pay of course they cannot take a, a shareholder on paper and no one does that everybody will have to pay except except federal government five percent will be in kind for the services for rentals etc so the five five percent of government is all that it is doing i remember federal government has been spending money on this project so all of its services and what they have been doing will be quantified. If it is equal to 5%, they take 5%. If it is more, they get their fund. If it is less, the, 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 the services will be quantified and make up to 5%. Okay. The uh, monies have been spent by government, yes. Services have been given, yes. Building have been given, yes. Okay, Senator, you say the federal government has been spending money. How, how much has been spent so far? Because many Nigerians are concerned. They say, oh, they have spent our money and uh, we don't have an explanation. Is it uh, 130 billion Naira, as some people are alleging, or it is 5 billion uh, Naira? How much has been spent so far? Because okay, so, this is about our money, okay, our so, money. Okay, so, so in 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, all of the monies voted for national carrier was 5 billion, voted and budgeted for. But all that was released is in the neighborhood of about 3 billion, not 85 billion. 
and that three billion has not been expended all of it as at the time I left office. And what has been done with that money is nothing but transaction advisory services, the AOC processes, salaries, a consultancy services, and the office in Abuja. No contract was given by, by, by Hadis Rika or, or the administration at the time. These are the things that were used for the money. And there is Freedom of Information Act. People can apply and get all the records what the money has been used for. That is number one. Number two, it is in the imagination of Roland Iyayi in the National Assembly that he said 85 billion was budgeted and spent. And when they asked him, he said MBS. Now, I think MBS should question why is the source. Is it true that they have it on their records, MBS, that the money has been spent? So I told you now the total amount of money from 2016 to 2023 is only 5 billion, not always released. Only about 3 billion that was released. And at the time I left, all of it has not been utilized. And I told you what the money was for. Transaction advisory services, AOC processes, salaries, consultancies, and the office in, in Abuja. So the 85 billion is in the head of the person who said it. Okay. You mentioned, uh, you referred earlier to AOC. And that's one of the things that uh, that Kolumide brought up when he was testifying before the House Aviation Committee. And he said that the first stage of the AOC has not even been concluded. What exactly is the truth? Well, uh, I think what he meant at that time, because he was caught uh, halfway, what he meant at that time is that, look, the post holders, which is the key personnel of the airline, their contract expired 31st of May. And NCA is saying, look, the contract of the people to run this airline has expired. So change them. If they had changed them, all of them, then they go back to stage one. But they have not changed them. They only extended their contract. So since they have, they have already gone to NCA, been interviewed, so they have passed. As far as that is concerned, they have passed that level already. Because immediately the uh, ministry received it, and Nigeria received it, they reappointed the same people. So they don't need to go any, through any diligence because they're the same people. So it's gone past, past uh, uh, um, stage one. I, it's my belief that all of the documentation, including 23 set of manuals, have been sent to, at the time William has been sent to uh, uh, NCAA. And so the term expired, but it, they were renewed, the same people. So you're not going back to stage, stage one, you're continuing. Well, one of the things that came up in that uh uh, uh, conversation between Olumide and the uh, committee was that the flight that we saw, the aircraft that we saw on May 29th was uh, a chartered aircraft. Now, how much was paid for that uh, chartered aircraft and who chartered the aircraft? And we were told that the aircraft took some uh, passengers away from Nigeria, what they called, uh, referred to as returned passengers. Now, who took uh, uh, you know, the uh, benefit for that? Ethiopian Airlines or Nigeria Air? Well, so very quickly, first and foremost, uh, the AOC owned by Ethiopian Airlines is known to Nigerian laws and the NCAA. They are permitted to come in as either scheduled passenger, charter, or cargo. Now, they have to come if they are coming under one of the three. So they came on the charter. Charter that don't mean that anybody paid for anything. To answer your question, government did not pay a dime for that to come in. That is number one. Number two, there are no revenue passengers going out. That would have been totally against the law and would have been allowed. And like I said also, is their own marketing strategy as partners, equity partners, that they came to do this unveiling on a special allowance which is called charter. Charter does not mean that they paid for it. If there's anybody who would have paid for it, it would have been the Ethiopian airline, not the Nigerian government at all. No penny is paid. I hear figures like 139 billion was used to pen the aircraft and bring it in. How ridiculous can that be? I think, Dr. Rubin, um, people should get a bit more serious. Uh, 139 billion can buy five brand new 737s. So how would we pay that to pen an aircraft and bring it in just for the show? So there is no iota of truth, no penny is paid, and, and people should invoke the Freedom of Information Act in place to ask for the records and to ask for the figures and to ask for explanation and to be given to them, I believe. Because that's what we've been doing while we're in government. Okay, but domestic airline operators have also expressed concern. They went to court 
And part of the argument is that the Federal High Court in Abuja, I think it was the Court of Justice uh, Ambrose uh, Louis Alagua, uh, who then said that, look, uh, the uh, unveiling of Nigeria Air should not go ahead. So it will look like what was done on May 29 was a violation of a subsisting court order. Are we aware? Well, uh, of, uh, uh, Dr. Rivlin, what I remember, I am very... Uh, I am very aware of that, uh, uh, but what I am aware of also is that I remember there was a court order and there was a motion to vacate that court order immediately by our councils. But I am not court. I cannot determine here on TV whether there is content of court or none. I think I leave that one to the courts. But certainly there was a motion in place to vacate that order. Okay, one of the concerns of the domestic airline... And again, and, and, and again... Please go ahead. Yes, yes, go ahead. One of the concerns of the domestic airline operators also is that Ethiopian Airlines has been given an advantage. First, to initially operate within the domestic routes. Two, to enjoy tax holidays for 15 years. And that the priority of the Ministry of Aviation under your watch should have been to provide BASA opportunities in terms of frequency of flights from Nigeria to other parts of the world, rather than giving advantage to a foreign airline to come and dominate uh, the domestic routes in Nigeria. Well, so, um, <laughs> so allow for, uh, there is a company called Nigerian Air with shareholding. Just like Air Peace has announced, that they have acquired 70% of Antigua and Barbuda National Airline. In the same way, they are acquiring 70%. In the same way that Ethiopians are acquiring 49%. And this Nigerian air is known to, to Nigerian laws. Once it starts operation, it will be flying. Nobody stops Max Air or Airpiece or Ibom to go and buy shares in Lufthansa or to invite Lufthansa to buy 49% of their own. So uh, whether they should do op uh, operations locally, yes, they should because they are a Nigerian company. And the Nigerian law allows you to come and own 100% of business. 100% of a business in Nigeria as a foreigner. There's nothing wrong with that. Regarding tax holiday, in the initial outline business case, there was allowance that they should be given some tax incentives. Because at that time, aviation became the fastest growing sector of the economy. So Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning thought that by giving them some tax incentives, just like they don't to Tangote, for example, or to anybody, uh, a pioneer, that will help them to continue to um, participate and contribute to the GDP of Nigeria. But that has since been removed. Uh, that was in the initial OBC, but now currently there is no tax uh, uh, break or tax holiday for Nigeria Air Limited. They will operate within the same tax laws that everybody is operating. But mark you, they are going to operate within a special economic zone that we established, and they will enjoy those taxes like every other person. So they enjoy the same like Airpiece or Ibom or anybody. And remember, Dr. Abati, we have promoted these local airlines beyond anybody had done. 50% of all the airlines today in Nigeria flying were, 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 were licensed to fly during my tenure under Buhari government. So we have supported them in that direction. And we have also supported them by removing taxes, removing caps and duties, and removing VAT on aircraft and space. That is, ha, has been unprecedented. Is support for national, uh, uh, our, our, our airlines in Nigeria, which we did. Okay, one of the questions Nigerians are asking is that ahead of May 29th, the day of the unveiling, you had promised that three aircraft will be on the ground for the purpose of the unveiling. But you, uh, you ended up uh, providing Nigerians with a chartered aircraft. What happened? The idea of the chartered craft, was that an afterthought? No, that is not the case, uh, Dr. Abati. We said, for the takeover of the air airline, three aircraft in the name of Nigeria Air with the 5 November registration, which means with the Nigerian registration, will commence the operations once the AOC is ready. But that on that Friday, there will be an aircraft, Nigerian Air aircraft, that will come in to do the unveiling, to showcase what it is, as part of their marketing strategy. 
and the aircraft came in and did that and they created the necessary hype they wanted to create as their own business and i want to tell you that look now now there are two things here i think perhaps people should understand that some people now own nigeria limited as against at the time when the government was trying to push the idea now they have shareholding and they decide to do whatever marketing they want to do in their own style so long as they are within our laws so the, the, the aircraft that they say is an Ethiopian register, yes it is. And they will not come and keep uh, the airplanes here pending when the AOC and everything is ready before they commence flight. We've seen airlines in Nigeria did so. i give you an example. Recently we've seen Rano kept aircraft for about two or three months on the ground doing nothing, waiting to, to start operations. And we've also seen an airpiece at the time. He came to us and asked that he wanted us to permit him to be going to America, China, London, everywhere. We all gave him the permit to go. And he brought in two triple sevens. He was paying leases of about maybe $250,000 per one. So which is half a million dollars he was paying per month for the two aircraft. And he kept them for 18 months. And that is $9 million. And didn't go anywhere. And by the time he was ready to start, his engine landing gear was due, his engine was due. Depending on what it is that was due, if you put together another maybe $10 million. So he was starting that business with minus $19 million. Who does that? These Ethiopian people, they are masters of the game. They are being in the business for 77 years. They also have post profit during COVID. Last year, they post profit of $1 billion. They're the only airline with, with Qatar that post profit during COVID. So they wouldn't come and keep the aircraft waiting for the AOC to happen before they start flying. But once you say the AOC is ready, the aircraft are ready Okay. to this, come in with the 5 November registration, which is Nigerian registration, okay. and, and fly. Okay, these Ethiopian people, to use your phrase, how much have they invested in this Nigeria Air project? Or how much are they expected to invest? And are they also going to be in charge of the maintenance contract? I think Nigerians would like to know. Well, well, so who will do the maintenance contract for the airline? We should ask the shareholders. If they agree they want to give it to Ethiopian to do, it's fine for them. It's not our case. If they agree to give it to somebody in Kethlebik or somebody in Morocco to do it for them, it's their business. But the, I know that part of our roadmap here in Nigeria, we have established an MRO, which is coming soon, maintenance repair of a whole facility, which is coming soon, which they can leverage upon. So is, is the owners, you cannot tell airpiece you must go to social location to maintain your aircraft. It's their business. So it's the business of the owners. How much have Ethiopian Airlines paid? I have answered the question earlier on. But they will pay equal to 49% of their money. And the total, I told you, is $200 million, the capitalization. So they will pay 49% of that. And the rest will pay, everybody will pay his own shareholding. Okay. You've, you've talked about the shareholding. How about the uh, management structure? What percentage in terms of management is reserved for Nigerians, Nigerian investors, and what percentage is reserved for the Ethiopians? Also, at the time, at the time that we were driving the process, um, before we found the investors, you know, during the OBC, we said, and it must be so, that all the crew, the pilots, the engineers, the cabin crew, will be Nigerians. So long as there is a competent Nigerian, licensed to, to exercise his license on that type of aircraft it will be a nigerian so nigeria first that's what we agreed who are going to be holding the management uh, of the airline it is an airline it is a company the owners of the company will decide who owns which position that will pay them uh, uh, um, value for their money in my opinion the nigeria air limited a company known to nigeria law will operate within the laws of nigeria and ensure that it's value for money but what we put in place is that to ensure that majority, maybe 90, 95% of the airline must remain Nigerian. Okay. And I, I think they have that agreement as well. Okay. I want to go back to the first question, where I started from. And I was asking for a justification. Right. There are some Nigerians who are saying, look, we have Arike, we have aero contractors uh, that could have been brought together and then we'll form Nigeria Air. Instead of creating a new thing and bringing uh, Ethiopians into the matter. Could there have been a different approach to the matter? Well, so, no, no, I think whoever would have suggested that would have been done a very, very big error and mess. Because at the time that Arik Air 
took over uh, was took, taken over by Amcon. The Amcon exposure in Eric Air is 250 billion Nigerian naira. And Nigerian agencies under aviation were owed about 30 billion by Eric. And plus other people like catering and uh, uh, ground handling and so on. So Eric was indebted to about 300 billion naira. So who will start a business with minus 300 billion naira? That is one. Number two, there would have been litigation by legacy owners. You will not want to start the business and then you go to court. And now we have been vindicated that that is true because now Arik had gone to court and has taken over back his airline. And at the time, all of the aircraft of, uh, uh, that Arik had, they, I think there were about three of them or so, they were flying. They have engines all over the world. They have aircraft all over the world, over the world held because they are owing. So if you start using uh, uh, Arik, using Arik and, and Aero put together, you would have started with litigation and we have been vindicated. So it was a wrong idea. But the best idea is to have an airline that is private sector led and driven. 95% private sector and 5% government. government. So that government would have skin in the game, people would trust us. Because in the past, from 1980 when the sector was liberalized, we had 130 airlines that started. Only seven of them. Hello? I'm listening. Hello? I'm listening. I'm with you. 100 and 130. Oh, Please my God. Please go ahead. I can't so hear there you. There are 130 uh, airlines that started, and they've all crumbled. Only about maybe 10 uh, of the of them are still alive in Nigeria. If I'm being heard, because I can't hear anybody. Okay. But 130. I Okay. I can't hear you. Hello? Can you hear me from the studio in Lagos? No? They've all gone down the drain. That's the point I'm making. That the 130 from Cabo, Okada, Haraka, Hako, Kualkual, Chanchengi, ADC, Bellevue, Fascination, name it. They've all completely gone down, down the drain. Okay. One not been heard? One, yes, I can hear you clearly, if you can hear me. Oh my God. One other question that was raised uh, oh, in the I'm video. Sorry, doctor, I can't hear you. You can't hear me, okay. We'll take uh, a quick break, and when we we'll return, the conversation with Senator Hadi Sirika, former Minister of Aviation of Nigeria, will continue. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to This Day Live, the Sunday talk show here on the Arise News Channel. Our guest is still... Senator Hadi Sirika, former Minister of Aviation of Nigeria, and we've been discussing the Nigeria Air Project. Senator Sirika, as we begin to uh, uh, wind down uh, this uh, conversation, one question raised in the uh, video, one of the videos that was shown before we started this conversation, was the question, why the unveiling on May 29, the very last day that the administration that you served was leaving? Why didn't you just leave it for the new administration to come in and continue from wherever the matter had reached? Why well, the in Tarugu, last I've day? answered that question saying that it was a dis So I was, I, I answered that question. I was saying that it was the owners of this Nigeria Air, the, air, the consortium with the federal government uh, of 5% of Mofi and everybody, it, they decided to do the unveiling as part of their marketing strategy. So it is not a government that was doing the unveiling to start the job. No, 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 not at all. It was them who did, and I was invited and I went there. But Dr. Awati, before we run out of time, there are two things fundamental that I want to answer. One of them is that there is allegation that we, the whole thing was shrouded in secrecy. And that I find mind-boggling and I find disturbing. These airline we have advertised during the procurement stage in national dailies and the economist and there was a business conference and members of airline operations of nigeria participated in the business conference i remember we've seen airpiece participating in the business conference and they were everything was deposited on the website we had a website dedicated being regulated by icrc and the whole world knew that we were bidding and everybody bid it. And they even asked for extension of time, some of the bidders, which we gave them uh, four weeks. And it was open and someone won. So why is the secrecy question? 
And we are, you said at the beginning of this interview that I am synonymous with Nigeria, Air, which means that everything has been done, has been said. We held six stakeholder conferences. Six. Six. In every stakeholder conference, we will discuss in Nigeria Air. We will tweak it. We had an outline business case. We presented it to the public. We presented it to the stakeholders. So everybody is in the know. So why is the secret about? And the bidding was done transparently, transparently, and it was deposited on the website during the bidding. And don't forget, Ministries of Finance, Budget, and National Planning, uh, Attorney General, uh, Aviation, uh, uh, etc., were members of the evaluation team to evaluate. It's not only aviation. And ICRC, ICRC are the regulators to regulate any PPP and ensure that it's according to the law. And they issued a compliance certificate to say, yes, what you have done is within the law. So why is the secrecy they're talking about? Well, Senator, you've... I think it's in their imagination. You've referred to airpiece about twice in, in the course of this conversation. But it's not only airpiece or SACO. Yes. It's, uh, you know, the airline operators of Nigeria who seem to, you know, agree on their objections to Nigeria Air. What do you think their fears could possibly be? Well, I think their fears that they think that perhaps the airline will get advantage because government has a stake in it, 5%. They will be given tax-free, which we said it is not the case. Now we know. Or they will be given some other advantage. There is not going to be any advantage given to this airline. And we invited, I personally invited every single one of them that, look, this airline is the first time in Nigeria that you have a well-structured airline with a clear business case, not owned by one man, but it's going to be owned by people who are professional who knows how to run airlines. Don't forget, from the beginning of the, uh, the, the liberalization of the sector in 1980, we had Cabo, Okada, Haruko, Hakat, Holt, Chen Chenji, Kuala Kuala, Air, all of them, 130 airlines, all of them down the drain. Because the structure is wrong. There is poor governance. I remember when we were living, we did a policy, and I'm sure by now NCA may release the regulation. We did a policy that there must be corporate governance. They must appoint in all airlines at least one director independent to be approved by, by NCA. They nominate, NCA approves. They must also appoint at least one out of the top four auditing firms for NCA to approve, to, increase, to improve the governance, to ensure that they are healthy, these airlines. We have been supporting them all over the place. People, uh, uh, the concern they had of being partial, Nigerians can remember the time I stood up for air peace and ensured that they must be going to Dubai. Okay, Senator. And they were given Dubai. Are they going now? No. Why? No capacity. No capacity. So, no, f finally, Dr. Abati, I think uh, I agree it is not only air peace, but I'm talking about all of them. There are only five of them that went to, to the so called court air peace, United. In fact, United, when they came in, when they came in, there was objection to their name because of United Airlines in America. I, that they must change. I said, well, let United in America change their name, but we register our own. And he got the license without knowing me. He came, they, he came to my house during a meeting when I was ill. They came to see me, AON, and begged me to please stop the Nigeria Air Project. And I told them that, why don't you go and buy shares in it? And he told me that, Honorable Minister, I need to appreciate you that I never knew you, I have never met you in my life, but my, I went for my license and I got it. And that is the culture we built in aviation. 50% of all airlines today in Nigeria were done under Buhari, under my supervision. And none of them ever had a reason to come and see me as minister. He just go ahead and it's done professionally. Nigeria else, Air also would not be treated differently from them. 50% of all airlines today in Nigeria were done under my name. So during our tenure, aviation, became the fastest growing sector. Our airlines have doubled. Our airports have doubled. Our passenger number have tripled. We were safe and secure. We were efficient. We were just trying to create a roadmap that is intertwined with each other to create a maintenance center to provide a leasing company where they can lease money because now when they go, there's country risk. They lease in dollars. We have now put the ALC here in Nigeria, the leasing company here in Nigeria. They can leverage. We have an MRO here. It's coming up. We have a university to train people with high-level manpower. We did that. We gave them level playing field. We supported them. No VAT, no tax, no custom duty. I was all over supporting them. Well, uh, the value jet guy has confirmed that. He's never known me. He has a license. Senator Sirica, well, before we wrap this up, one more question. 
the controversy over the firefighting trucks that you were led to have bought for about 12 billion naira. Is that true? If it is not 12 billion, how much did the ministry spend on those firefighting trucks? And why the urgency at the last minute? Well, well fire trucks, if you are an aviator, you know that once there is no fire cover, the airport will be shot. It's a very serious safety issue. So uh, the cause of Sosoliso crash and the guys dying, it was wind shear that crushed the aircraft, but the students would have been alive today. But they burnt to ashes because of absence of fire cover. So we ordered three years ago for these fire trucks. And yes, they are about 1.2 billion per piece. We ordered for them to be manufactured specifically for Nigeria. It's not on the shelf. And that thing, don't forget, somebody said on social media that he checked and they were selling about 600 million dollars. Why 1.2 billion? Okay, you add 1% VAT, you add 5% withholding tax, you add uh, custom duty, you add transportation, you add uh, training, you add spares, you add uh, the mark off of the contractor, you add the cost of funds, you add also the exchange rate from 600 million naira, if I even take his figure. But before I close on this, I think I need to respond to my friend who said it was a fraud. Uh, right Honorable Unalim, the former chairman of House Committee on Aviation. Um, what, he, what I said to him in private, I will say it now. He asked me, just to give him some comfort, he asked me to please, please, please indulge him and give him 5% of the airline. That 5%, what I told him in private is that it belongs to the owners. And I believe they've still been willing to offer him if you have the money. So it is not me giving it. I didn't get involved. It was a bidding process. And I'm very sure that they will have reserved 5% for him and his people according to him. So he should approach them uh, to, to get his 5% that he needed. But the fire truck, we did it. And in fact, we even gave more. We gave, I think, about five more, even after this pro uh, procurement. And the records are there. And there is Freedom of Information Act. You can go and get the records, apply the, for the records, and get them. Okay, uh, Senator, let, let's just get and one. And we are very responsible people, accountable to our actions. Okay, Senator, let's get one thing clear. You are saying that Honorable Unaji asked for 5%. Is it 5% of Nigeria Air or 5% of the firefighting trucks uh, contract? No, he asked me exactly, you know, I record all my things anyway, but, and I have it very clear. He asked me that please, I should give him 5% of the Nigeria air to carry him along with his people. <laughs> I am saying, and I said to him that time, that look, honorable, he didn't understand me. This is a bidding process that has taken place. And some people win, won rather. So I think you should go to those people and ask them the 5%. So I want to assure him that at some point, even the 5% held by federal government will go to market. So he should get his money ready and buy for him and his people according to him. That's in, what I'm saying in about o Nigeria Air. In other words, Honorable Naji and his colleagues in the House of Reps were in the Aviation Committee were asking to be bribed before they could support the Nigeria no, Air project. In, no, in other words, no, in other, no, in, no, no, in, in, no, 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 in other words, Honorable, let's be fair, Honorable Ilan Nolim didn't say other members. He said he wants him and his people. His people could be his family, could be members, could be leadership. I didn't know what it means. But him and his people, 5%. I am saying that he should relax and approach the owners. That's exactly what I told him in, in camera. You remember, I've been to House of Reps 20 years ago. And 10 years ago, I was senator. I know how the weekends is. He called for a public hearing. And right after the public hearing, he just turned the paper and read the riot act. What is the practice in National Assembly is that after hearing people and the complaint, you now go and sit down as a committee, the clerks will do their job, you now sit down, discuss the issues, raise them, approach the whole house of reps, and take position of the house plus leadership, and come back and make your findings known. But not immediately after you now just read the riot act. It means it's predetermined. To say, okay, arrest the ideas, Rika, we are not part of this. Of course, it's an executive exercise and function. You cannot be part of it. But you have been overseeing the ministry for four years. Is it now that you know there is fraud in the, in the airline? We started in 2016, which means you didn't do your work. Well, on you that note. You have been very diligent to ensure that in four years, he has found out whether it's corruption or not corruption. 
On that, is, there's fraud. On that note, I would like to thank you very much, uh, Senator Hadi Sirika, former Minister of Aviation of Nigeria, for joining us on This Day Live, the Sunday talk show.